and welcome back to the Lighthouse Addictions Topic Show. Uh, we are live here from the Lighthouse Treatment Center. My name is Joe, and I'm your host for today. And I'm here with Callie and Nolan, our alumni outreach representatives. Thank you both for being here. Um, today we are discussing the importance of family support in recovery, and that is a very important topic. So first of all, Nolan and Callie, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do here at the Lighthouse? Sure. Uh, my name is Nolan, and I am the alumni outreach representative. Um, and I make phone calls and provide aftercare support to the alumni once they leave treatment. Beautiful. Thank you. So I am also an, an alumni outreach rep, um, and pretty much everything Nolan just listed, that's what I do too. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the whole um, job and whatnot, but you know, slowly but surely getting there. Yeah, you guys are both doing an amazing job. Thank you. So I know both of you personally, and I just wanted um, to say that I admire the fact that both of you are very family oriented. So um, you guys are the perfect people to be interviewing for this topic. Um, how have you both balanced recovery work and family life after or since you've gotten sober? Well, um, I guess I'll start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, with um, definitely family oriented. Um, you know, once I left treatment the third time, um, Someone asked me in the rooms because we we did um, we we do one of these things when you leave treatment where everybody goes around the room and then says their goodbyes to you. Mm. And somebody asked me, say, "Hey, Nolan, so like, what are you you know what are you gonna do this time? You're a retread. You've been here before. Mm. You know what are you gonna do different?" And at that moment, you know, like I was, I really didn't have many words to say. But what I did know was that um, left to my own devices, you know, I mean, I would surely get loaded. Mm -hmm. So I had to turn it over. I go, the only person that can do this for me, the only thing that can, give, that can do this for me is the man up above. So I gave it to that person. And ever since then, I was able to be guided, you know what I mean, in my own recovery. Um, I know that at this point in my recovery, if I, as long as I put my higher power and recovery first or reprioritize, everything else will fall into place. Mm. Once I put anything before that, lose it'll be, it. yeah, you'll lose it instantly like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and as long as I do that, um, I think um, my higher power has given me a well-balanced life, even though it's very busy. Many days, it's 16-hour days, yeah. you know what I mean? Starting at 5 a.m., coming home at 10 after a meeting, um, you know. Um, to, you know, I'm, on my first year of sobriety, um, my partner at that time proposed at my first year. Stay and then there. shortly thereafter, <laughs> we're both there. <laughs> shortly beautiful. thereafter, yeah, um, you know, we got married, and um, now we're in the process of um, fostering to adopt. So, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be an auntie. <laughs> <laughs> both of you I are. I'm so excited shop. for you. Thank we'll continue you. to pray for you. Oh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. How about you, um, Kelly? Balance super important. How do you do it? Balance, um, you know. In the very beginning, I was doing one to two meetings a day. Wow. The program was really, really big for me, but it just so happened that my now husband kind of paved the path before me. He's the one who led me into the rooms, and oh. that helped a lot. Yeah. Um, I was introduced to an amazing woman who has just stayed in my corner. Um, she's become kind of like my mom, mm. you know? Um, I always remember what I was like, what led me to feeling miserable all the time, and that keeps me here. It yeah. just kind of keeps me grounded. I don't always want to have to go to do, like, I don't know, be responsible. I don't want to have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and adult. do my hair and makeup yeah. and go to work. Yeah, you know, sometimes <laughs> I want to just be able to, I don't know, relax, but... Mm -hmm. um, I get to do these things today, so it makes it all worth it. That's beautiful. We're so happy to have you part of our team. Thanks. So funny story is that yeah. her husband was my sponsor. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we met in treatment, and he stayed sober, and I didn't. You know what I mean? So after about a year of staying <laughs> in my addiction, you know what I mean, I asked him to sponsor me. And he did. So shout out to Ricardo. Hey, man. Hey. Love you. And he actually works at the facility, too. Yeah, right. so okay. yes, yeah, awesome. So it's a it's a family affair. Yeah. Yep. So early in your own recovery, do you feel that family support was important to have and why? I'll let you start because my story is a little different. Okay. So family support, I had a lot of family support. Um some that wasn't always 
wanted. Hmm. Um, I felt Ooh. like I needed a little bit of space. Um, I've had a lot of people it, in my family who were very um, open-minded to the program. Mm -hmm. um, but I learned, I learned distance and boundaries um, and just kind of, I tried to walk my own path. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. That's very important. Well, I'm just gonna like piggyback on that. Um, in my early recovery, it was important to have family support and I did receive that, but in a way that I didn't realize that I needed by them giving me the space to do what I needed to do for my recovery. So it's really interesting that you said boundaries and distance, because sometimes that's what we need, and that's, mm -hmm. sometimes that's what support will look like for, for you, you know. Mm -hmm. So how about you, Nolan? Well, you know, like, um, a lot of um, my disease manifested um, in itself in a, a lot of um, shame and guilt and abandonment um, from my family. You know, for so being homosexual, it was one of those things in in a Filipino culture, mm. or at least in or at least in my family, that was already seen as not a very negative thing. So I already knew that I had to deal with that with them. Um, going into treatment the first time, um, you know, they came to visit me every weekend. You know, what I mean, because they knew that I had an issue, um, things like that. But what we didn't work on was our underlying issues and our underlying um, relationship issues between my parents and myself. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, you know, as I went into the second one, I found out that I was extremely codependent mm -hmm. and I also realized that my parents were enablers. Mm -hmm. So they were, um, they were, um, uh, that the quote, you know, quote unquote, loving me to death, mm -hmm. literally, you know what I mean? And I started to realize that I'm like, okay, so they're, you know, they're enabling me to stay in my disease and I, and, um, it's true. You know what I mean? Um, I was living in their house. Um, you know, they were giving me free food, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't, I didn't have any accountability, no responsibility. And, um, the third time around, you know, I'm trying to become, you know, independent, trying to adopt by myself, you know what I mean? Uh, be financially independent mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And, um, I realized that at the time when I lost everything, you know, I really had to make a, a strong boundary. You know what I mean? I had to say, you know, like, okay, you know, if my parents still don't accept me for who I am, you know what I mean? And if all they're doing is really just loving me to death, quote unquote, I need to be, and if I'm going to be doing this for myself, I was prepared at that moment to be like, okay, until I can do this for myself, mm -hmm. it might not be a good idea for me to stay in this relationship um, or try or be dependent on my parents, mm -hmm. you know? So um, <clears throat> it, it didn't, it didn't start manifesting itself in a positive way until I could realize in myself that I had these underlying issues mm -hmm. and I had to work on them and then um, and then and then help and then start mending the relationship with my parents such as with family therapy that that helped my me me a lot you know and then thank God they were willing to do that you know they were able to realize um, what what it meant to love you to death mm. you know what it meant to enable you and so um, I would say today now the support of my family is huge you know they you know they love me for who I am finally you know what I mean mm -hmm. and you know thank God you know and um, um, I truly appreciate them so I think it's very important that they stuck around so that's cool beautiful thank you yeah. okay <laughs> um, <laughs> what are some challenges you and your family faced when you decided it was time to get sober I guess the biggest challenge was realizing that it, that I wasn't the only one with the issue mm -hmm. yeah uh -huh. that's it's a family disease most definitely yeah right so and I you know I, I definitely feel like um, they truly believe that they that it was they were providing love you know when really it was it was more more than that and it it, it, it showed itself in a negative way in my own addiction you know so beautiful I definitely feel like the whole family disease thing it's so true in so many ways you know I have I it's showed its its face in in so many different people in my life, um, no, near and far, um, and it's just it's crazy to think that now, thinking that it was okay back then to live that way mm -hmm. um, and support people who are also living that way, um, to see me now working here trying to help people, it's it's kind of crazy, yeah. um, and it's cool because I'm not the only one working in recovery anymore. Um, I one of my my closest cousins he also does so it's the, oh, it's wow. just an amazing feeling that's beautiful thank you and as a recovering alcoholic and addict it is important to have a program of recovery in in place for ourselves so that we can continue to heal and grow is it important for family members to also have support programs in place for their own healing and growth 
So you were just talking about enabling and, and the codependency. Right. Yeah. I definitely believe so. Um, I'm a huge advocate for self-care. Um, just because somebody does not use drugs or alcohol doesn't mean they can't work on self. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone can use uh, spirituality. Um, everyone can use individual therapy. Um, and it, you know, the best advice I could give to somebody who does not use um, substances, um, and particularly drugs or alcohol, um, um, uh, is to be able, maybe Alan on meetings. Mm-hmm. You know, to understand the family member who is who is going through that understand the disease um, or let's say you're or let's say you know maybe or codependence issues go to mm-hmm. go to a fellowship that provides um, that provides a uh, um, coda Beautiful. or yeah code, um, codependency meetings you know things like that that actually just answered my next question which was uh, is there any support programs available for family members or loved ones of an alcoholic or addict and yes coda Al-Anon are um, are great resources to utilize if you are if you have somebody in your life that is struggling and you want to understand um, where they're coming from, why they do what they do, why they are the, who they are. Okay. Understanding, I think, is key because yes. everybody has an even playing field. Sure. Nobody's felt like feeling like they're being pointed at, you know, um, or being the odd man out because that just raises tempers and builds walls, and it's just never good. For sure. And um, how did family support look like? Like, What did that look like for you in your early recovery? You were saying that there was some distance and and, um, and space, and I also said that um, because of the fact that they weren't always in my face, you know, or always on top of me, like making sure I was going to meetings, like it created a space for me to be able to grow and do things on my own, so. So, um initially it was very it was just very like they were present physically present so mm-hmm. they come visit me in treatment you know what I mean every week which is great you know love mm-hmm. seeing my family you know trying to get me a little bit out of the element of um, you know the the 16 hour days in treatment you know um, and the redundancy of, of doing the same thing over and over again they got me out of that a little bit um, but it really didn't show it really didn't show um, it started to really show their support when they started um, starting to realize that it is a family disease, you know, starting to come to therapy, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And starting to, um, starting to be like, okay, um, I do recognize my own, my own, um, my own part in, in this behavior or in our family, in our family, um, dynamic, you know, and that really, really, um, opened my eyes to be like, okay, so, you know, you only know what you know. And sometimes people who are quote unquote, no quote, quote unquote, normal, don't even realize that they have issues, you know? So um, that really, it, it really helped me a lot in my own, in my own sobriety Beautiful. and recovery. Coming back together with my family, it took a while. Like yeah. some of them still to this day, I just took tears on Tuesday. Congratulations, and I, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, um, there's still family that I don't necessarily engage with. Hmm. Um, just because, you know, there's a lot of things um, from the past that have, that have happened and mm-hmm. there's just it's a gradual thing for me um it took it it took probably like a year for a lot of people for me to begin to be comfortable um giving those you know amends to mm-hmm. or or explaining tr- not trying to explain but um just make things right and and try and show that I'm not that person anymore um it took a long time for me to get to that point it's definitely a process oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's important that people are allowed to heal on their own time. So maybe even your own family members weren't ready to talk to you in certain mm-hmm. points of your recovery. Exactly. So, yeah, it's a process. We just have to be patient and just trust God that, that everything will fall into place. Um, is it important for family members to become educated in the process of addiction and recovery and why? I, I, think, it's, I think it's an amazing thing because then they can almost try and Put themselves in your mm-hmm. shoes you know try and understand a little bit more so um, like I have I have both sides of the playing field um, I have family who has no idea mm-hmm. um, and isn't really open to it which is fine and then I have some family who is like they can recite stuff out of the big book and yeah. they're like gung-ho like I'm so proud of you yeah. so it's kind of cool um, to have somebody who tries to understand um, and it's not such a like alien form you know um i i appreciate it it's Mm -hmm. it's just that common sense uh, not common sense but um 
I'm, I'm like I'm common a, ground. Yes, thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Um, it's just it makes everything a little more it just easy, mm-hmm. you know. Um, sobriety is never easy, but it just I feel like it just softens it all a little bit. Right. And you know me, like I'm, I'm like I'm a huge open book. You know, what I mean, I really don't try to like keep any part of my story, you know, in in the you know, in the back, you know, in the mm-hmm. back end or you know, in, in tail end. I just try to I try to be as open and honest as possible, you know. So I have um, I have you know majority of my family, a lot of them work in healthcare, mm-hmm. and some of them don't even really understand the nature of this disease, addiction, alcoholism, um, and they come to me. You know, they go, hey, you know, like, so... Mm, that's true. Yeah, they ask you. They use you. you as a resource, mm-hmm. yeah, for when they know somebody who's struggling. That's true. That's right. That's really cool. That's a really good point. So, um, you know, like, it, it's... And it, it, it boggles my mind sometimes. I'm like, oh, you know, like, you know, like, my story... Me? Yeah, my story is helping. <laughs> they would invite me before yeah. to family <laughs> oh, events, right. and now they're asking me. Yeah, now they want to know. Yeah. They want to know. So, you become this resource. You become this resource for your family, and it, it makes me feel... It makes me feel wanted. It mm-hmm. makes me feel like, you know, like, um, my opinion matters. You know yeah. what I mean? It makes me feel like... Valued. Valued. Yeah, there right. you go. Absolutely. And um, in a family dynamic, that's extremely important. Mm-hmm. Important. You know, you don't... Nobody wants to feel like the, the odd man out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially within their own family. Yeah, I get that. I remember, I think it was like seven months in recovery, and I was still in treatment, and I had gone to treatment um, outside of America. I was in Thailand. And uh, my mom had made a phone call to um, to my counselor, and she asked, "So is she recovered? Is Joe recovered yet?" <laughs> and um, I was I just kind of put my face on my I mean my hand on my face because I was I, you know it was hard to um, explain to her like this is going to be a lifelong process you right. know. And uh, when my counselor and I finally were able to tell that to her, I think that's really when she started to understand that, you know, there's a lot of things that she needed to learn as well as myself. And she gave me that space to be able to heal and to grow in my recovery. So, right. yeah, it is very important to have education. So how has your family members reacted to your recovery process? So far, everybody seems to like the whole new me. Yeah. Um, nobody liked the old me, including myself. Um, I think I think it's been a positive outcome mm-hmm. for everybody involved because it's not just us when we're in our addiction. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone is affected. Mm-hmm. I think they're they're amazed. You know what I mean? For for from being like where I used to be at. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To coming this far and now working in treatment treatment helping other people. Um, you know, like and and being coming that resource not just to you know to a, our my immediate family but to a community. It's like um, it's an extreme honor, um, and it, it's it's something that um, that I don't think they ever thought that I could ever be, mm-hmm. you know, uh, or any one of us, you know, any one of us, you know. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, in one sentence, <clears throat> excuse me. What advice would you give to an alcoholic or addict who is currently struggling? Just stay. Stay. Just stay. Yeah. yeah. Keep your seat. Keep your seat mm-hmm. in the room. Yeah. Yes. And in one sentence, what advice would you give to a family member or a loved one um, who has an addicted person in their life? <clears throat> oh, that's a hard one. Right. That's a diff- that's a <laughs> difficult. Um, it doesn't have to be one sentence. Just like overall, what would you say to them? Love them, but don't enable them. Mm. Yeah. Um be understanding but wise I guess yeah don't don't feed in yeah yeah well thank you both so much for being on the show uh please check up uh with us next week for more recovery related topics and I hope you guys have a great day bye bye